Allison and welcome back to my channel, my latest bookception. Now, as you can see by the title, I'm going over something a bit controversial to some people. Yeah. Now wait, before you click off this video, this title up here is a bit, like, misleading. I don't hate the Darkling, but I feel like this is a conversation I really want to have. Um, the Darkling is a character that a lot of people really love, and I think there's a lot of problematic parts of the character that should be looked at in a more specific light. Now if you just clicked on this video and have no idea who the Darkling is or why someone may hate him, and that might be controversial, um, the Darkling is from the Grishaverse by Leigh Bardugo. He's primarily seen in the Smoke and Bone trilogy and then seen again in King of Scars. Now if you haven't read the books I just mentioned, I'm putting a spoiler warning on this. I really do recommend you reading these series. If you've read these books and you want to know why I don't like the Darkling, or you're just here for the ride and don't really care about spoilers at all and just want to see what I'm going to talk about, come on in. We're going to get started. First up, who is the Darkling? The Darkling is an extremely powerful Grisha who can summon darkness and a few other things. He is the grandson of a saint and is like hundreds of years old. That's really important to why I don't like him. I don't hate him as a character. I think he's a really complex and really intriguing character. To me, the Darkling is like equivalent to an umbrage, someone that you just can't stand and no matter why they do what they do, they're just an awful person no matter what. They are manipulative. He is fun to be villainous, but you should not support them because literally what they're doing is objectively bad. The Darkling is manipulating people into getting what he wants. The Darkling will take someone, isolate them from everyone else, and make them feel as if he thinks that they're the most important person in the world. He will force someone to get what he wants while making it think that they have a choice, while being extremely charming and just all around seeming like a good dude. And then the second that they turn around or they want something different than he will, he will hurt them multiple times. My favorite example of this is looking at Jenya. As a child, she shows great promise to be a tailor, and so he trains her to be the best tailor like we've ever seen. Like, tailor was not really a thing that Grisha became because it's kind of useless. But he trained her to be a fantastic tailor, gave her to the queen to be the queen's tailor. She's forced away from the rest of the Grisha children and works with the queen specifically by herself. The queen starts by loving her and then becomes abusive as Jenya is shown to be very beautiful and the queen becomes jealous. The Dark Queen continues to tell Jenya that she's so important and he's the only one that really understands her. The Dark Queen even forces Jenya so far to force her to let the king come on to her and make advances on her, which she does not want. But all through this, Jenya is so loyal to the Dark Queen because she believes in him and the vision he has for Grisha. But eventually, you know, when she, like, talks to Elena and sees how she's being treated and it's kind of a similar isolation from everyone else, there's a moment when Genya lets Elena go and run away. And you know what the Darkling does? He literally does the thing that he knows will hurt Genya the most by disfiguring her entire body. So she's a scarred, ugly woman because she prays and valued beauty so much. And Genya is not the only character we see this in. We see it in detail and from Elena's point of view. We see Zoya go through this. And literally every other Grisha is so loyal to the Darkling until he goes like crazy it seems to them and wants to destroy the king. So yeah, I don't like the Darkling. That entire arc of his character was not where I started to dislike him though. The place where I started to feel just disgusted by him is any time he would make romantic advances on Elena. As I said, the Darkling is hundreds and hundreds of years old. Like, we're not even quite sure how old he is. He's just been alive forever, using his magic to continue to make himself stronger. But he makes advances on Elena, 
who at the time of the book is like 17 years old. So, you know, you have that giant age difference, which just disgusts me. And like, I literally felt like things crawling on my body any time that happened. So right off the start of that book, ew, no, 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 get away. And I don't even like the other love interest of Maul that much. I just felt disgusted by the Dark Queen with doing this. So with these reasons, I just can't like the Darkling as a person. Like, he is objectively a terrible person, and we know that. Now, people love the Darkling as a character and will literally, like, die for him. I mean, like, he's resurrected. I will protect him with my life. And I want to say, people are like, he's a sad boy, he's hurt, we, he can be fixed, and he can't. That's the thing I want people to see. He can't be fixed. He's not just a sad boy. He's not just hurt. He, yes, he is hurt and has had bad things happen to him because he's a Grisha, but he still continues to do bad things. I feel your trauma does not allow you to still be a terrible person. There's people that have had bad things happen to them and still found hope and be better. We look at Elena. She has all this stuff happen to her be by the Darkling and is still able to go on after that and start an orphanage and help people. She doesn't become awful like the Darkling. He chose to be that way. He's been acting this way for hundreds of years and when someone gives him an opportunity to be better with Elena, he's like, nope. Let's make the fold bigger. Let's take over the entire world. Let's resurrect myself. It's my interpretation of King of Scars that the cult of the Starless Saint is a reaction to how people have romanticized the Dark Queen. You have these people that, while they, yes, know the history of what the Dark Queen has done, choose to ignore that and instead love him and accept him for being an awful person and trying to destroy the entirety of Ravka. Now, don't get me wrong, I have loved ships with age differences or seemingly bad power dynamics. Uh, look at Malik, I am such a big Malik shipper, and yet there is this extreme age difference and experience difference of the world and also just relationships in general. But there is a difference, I feel, between ships like that and ships of the Dark Queen and Elena. All, every single action we see the Dark Queen make, he is trying to manipulate someone, whether it be Elena, whether it be the King, whether it be all the Grisha in general. He is just trying to take advantage of people who believe in him and think that he can help do better. But this idea of age differences and power dynamics has been around since forever in YA. One of the first big YA books was Twilight, which had Edward, a 118 year old man, and Bella, a 17 year old girl, be in a relationship together and say it's romantic. There's so many books of instructor and student relationships, many of which when I read when I was younger, I loved and I thought they were great relationships. And I look back now and see these are unhealthy and we should not be obsessed with them. So there is room to grow and see that we don't want this stuff in YA anymore because it is very damaging to people's idea of what a healthy relationship is. So why do we love the broken soul? I think a lot of this has to do with feeling that they can be fixed. There's something behind them. I mean, look at William Harrendell, a character I love. He is this hard, mean guy on the outside who is very sweet and kind when you get to know him and you get his walls down. Someone like the Darkling doesn't have that inside him anymore. He got rid of it hundreds of years ago, got rid of that naive little boy. And I don't think that's something we should, as a community, romanticize and fall in love with as a character because it's unhealthy. So. I know this video has controversial opinions to it, but I hope 
you guys understand where I'm coming from when I say I don't like the Darkling and I don't think he's a good person. I was trying to make like a controversial book opinions video, but I realized like this is my most controversial opinion and I don't really have much else after this. So I really wanted to discuss this and I'm sure I'm leaving out hundreds of things. I want to know what you guys think about the Darkling. Is he an abusive? manipulative man or is he just a little sweet guy if you like this video please do press that like button and hit that subscribe button and if you want to hit that notification bell know when i post my next video that's fun i was told to say that by my friend she really wanted me to tell you to to hit that notification bell so hope you have a great day i'll see you next week goodbye